Curiosity. Action. Transformation. Hi, everyone. This is Heather Vickery, and you've tuned in to the Brave Files podcast. Welcome. Have you ever wondered exactly how things work? Do you have that desire that some folks do to take things apart and understand them from the inside out? Honestly, I've never had that drive. But this week's guest, Janaid Ahmad, is a hobby enthusiast. And he came by that um, amazing title. I love it. Janaid does a lot of other really cool things, but we really talk about why he is a hobby enthusiast. What has led him to do that? This guy is a serious charmer who really wants to understand how things work. This desire to understand the analogy of how has led Janae down a wild and winding road. And he's learned to embrace storytelling along the journey that's led to him hosting a podcast. Uh, You'll have to listen. You'll have to listen in for where he tricks me with his story about Gary Vee but I have to give him mad props for his creative approach. So be sure to listen through. It's it's absolutely hilarious. The moment where I realized that he totally tricked me, but it was brilliant, is one that you are not going to want to miss. Janaid reminds us that being curious about how things work helps us stay connected and it helps us be creative. And it doesn't just inspire us, but it inspires everyone else in the process. Honestly, this episode is all about looking for signs of life and embracing them and then taking action. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this one, folks. So let's get started. You're listening to The Brave Files, where we share stories from people who've stepped out of fear and into bravery in every possible way. What we know for sure is that when we choose bravely on purpose, we choose bigger, we win bigger, and it's contagious. It's our hope that these stories connect with you and encourage you to embrace bravery in every possible way, day after day. Together, we can build a movement that enriches both our lives and our communities. The Brave Files is brought to you by Vickery & Co., a success and leadership coaching firm dedicated to helping you build a life and a business that you are absolutely in love with. Vickery & Co. offers group programs, membership communities, one-on-one coaching, VIP days, corporate trainings, workshops, keynote speaking, and so much more. Visit vickeryandco.com to get all the details. Hi, everyone. For years, today's guest, Janaid Ahmad, didn't think that he had his own brave story. How many of you are in that boat? I hear that all the time listeners and guests. Oh, I haven't really done anything brave. I don't have a brave story. Well, that is because Janaid spent his time being the operator and the behind the camera person capturing photos and videos. But then he received, and I am so curious to learn more about this, a direct invite from the very famous Gary V to do a podcast and document his own journey. Janaid accepted that challenge and he started a podcast about beekeeping. You weren't expecting that, were you? Neither was I, but happens to be one of his passions and hobbies. And through his own experience, Janaid became curious about what other podcasters, entrepreneurs, and hobbyists did to bring their hobbies and their side hustles and other fun things to the forefront of their lives. He began interviewing these folks. And the next thing you know, Janaid has taken himself from behind the camera to being directly in the limelight and putting himself all the way out there. And sometimes, folks, showing up and showing out is the bravest thing you can do. Welcome to the Brave Files, Janaid. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. This is awesome. (laughs) It's hard to write that. I I asked all of our guests to send me their brave story because I want them in your words. And then I, you know, I've change it up a little bit and put my own spin on it. But it's hard to write those stories about ourselves, I think. It is really hard. Yeah, it is. I want to start with, and I didn't even use this term in the intro, but I've heard you say several times the term storyteller. And this Mm -hmm. is an important part, both from a behind the camera scene, right? You're doing video or you're even if you're just doing still photography to being in the front. What does the term storyteller mean? mean to you? And how has the meaning of this word changed for you in the course of your professional life? Well, I love telling stories. And I didn't know that I loved to tell stories, to tell you the truth. 
it wasn't until later that I heard so many stories that I became a storyteller. So as I was behind the camera, capturing videos, capturing stories and writing articles and whatnot, I began to see how fascinating it was when you actually tell a story. The reason we are so pulled into movies, we are so pulled into TV shows, is because the story that it encapsulates and how it brings together. I'm so excited to be able to do that myself by interviewing so many people about their little journeys, about their stories. I started to understand what it meant to tell a story. The more that I listened, the more that it made sense to me of what it takes to tell a story. What points in the story do I need to focus on versus which points can I let go and then just continue to share the knowledge. So now that I've interviewed over 250 people on my podcast, it has been an absolutely joy to having these one-on-one -on -one conversations, 45 minutes locked in, and you can totally dedicate your mind space to learning about the story of a fellow podcasters, story of a fellow author, story of a fellow filmmaker or an actor. And it has been absolutely amazing. Don't you think, though, that photographers and videographers and people behind the scenes must also be storytellers in this process of bringing something to life? Absolutely. Photographers have to spend a lot more time telling the story from that one photo. Yeah. There's a lot, right? Just one photo tells a huge story. And the composition, the colors used, the, you know, all, all the things you got to put in to place to take that photo plays a huge role on what story that photo will tell. Now, videos and filmmakers are already, they kind of have that. a leeway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of leeway because not only are they, showing one photo they're they're showing a series of photos or series of images that ties it all together in fact if you've seen the movie up the first Great eight movie. was the first eight minutes or first 30 seconds where it's just all animation yeah tell that tells an entire story like the the best love story ever with no dialogue with no dialogue yeah, yeah. But that's so much in editing. I mean, the editing mm -hmm. process is powerfully important. It's one of the reasons I love you, Andrew, that I don't edit my own podcast because it's not mm -hmm. my skill set. And I do storytelling in different ways. But I know that without his storytelling lens, I can't mm -hmm. have the best version of an episode. Yeah. It's really interesting. Okay. Everybody wants to hear this. I just know they do. They're all listening. They're like, can we talk about the Gary V thing? What happened with Gary V? Well, Gary Vaynerchuk, he's wrote a few books. Yes. Right. Yeah. And when you're reading a book, uh, Gary or whoever's written the book, he's addressing you directly. Just like when we create videos, we create posts, we're addressing one person, the reader. So I was a reader of his book, Crushing It. And at the end, he's like, Dude, just go document your journey. So, so much. he told me, go do it, Janae. Come on. I, <laughs> I love that so much. I feel like I fell for a scam, but it's actually really brilliant because you're right. Like, if he's done his job well, he is speaking directly mm -hmm. to each reader. But I really did think well, like you met at an event and he's like, come on, I want this from you, Janae. But that's amazing. Plus, it was an audiobook <laughs> in his voice. Okay. <laughs> That's a good story. Yeah. Gary v told me to go document my journey. So I started my podcast. I'm like, what? What happened? This guy, I, know, I, I know. I fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. But to me, that's like looking for the universe's signs. Yes. Right. And being aware Absolutely. and embracing these opportunities, taking these chances and these risks. It's so much more fun to think that when Gary V was writing this book, mm -hmm. he was thinking about you. Yeah. 
Good for you. That's a fun, that's a fun <laughs> storyteller spin, actually. Yeah. And you're really absolutely. straight faced with it as well. I must not be your first victim on this. That's pretty fantastic. I love it. Actually, this is the first time I've said it this way. Or right because you asked me to tell my story. So I'm like, yeah. let me write it down. Yeah. So I wrote it down like two hours before we, we <laughs> oh, started I know. talking. Like, like, my assistant's like, is <laughs> is he gonna do the interview? Like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> came through we got it uh well so are you gonna do it like this again how do you feel about that i i feel really good and what's funny is that in may i get to go up on stage and talk at podfest i love that and i think this story is gonna appear again that would be is would be a great from the stage story to tell. I hope you'll yeah. name drop our podcast because <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's awesome. I won't be at Podfest, but hopefully we can maybe see a video of it or something. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. I love that. Our oh yeah, I'm hiring some people to to videotape me as I go up on stage and Smart. make a fool of myself. <laughs> I've done that. My good friend and client Keith, shout out to Keith. I think you still listen to the show has traveled with me several times to do um to record my keynote speeches. All right. Well, so this magical moment where you're listening to Gary V's audiobook and he's telling you personally and directly, go out and document your journey. What happens in your mind? What happens then that you choose to take action on? Well, what's beautiful is I've been known as somebody who has different hobbies. So my colleagues would tell me, Hey, what's your hobby this week? <laughs> right. So I would uh, I would talk about all these things that I was interested in. I've backed over 280 Kickstarter projects. So I would talk to these things about these things to my to my colleagues and like, dude, what's your hobby this week? And I was telling, them, you know, I'm I'm gonna be a beekeeper. <laughs> and they're like, no, that's not happening. <laughs> now the question is, why would I want to be a beekeeper? Well, um, Rewind to 2012, we take our, our firstborn, he's about two years old, he has some allergic reactions, mm -hmm. we take him to the doctor, and the doctor's like, okay, he's got a lot of different allergies, but then he also, you know, drops it in, like, get some local honey, it's really good for seasonal allergies. Now, my son has a lot of allergies, eggs, legumes, blah, 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 but seasonal allergies also affect breeding and it's not just him that it that affects affects a lot of people mm -hmm. those blooming flowers are pretty but they get you they really get you so you. i i file it away in the back of my head local honey you can find out local honey now any normal person will like oh i just go to the farmer's market and get <laughs> but local no, honey but you gotta make your own local honey i i gotta make my own <laughs> local honey so i'm like okay how do i do this that's amazing so this is 20, 2012, and about 2013 or 2014, my friend, he's like, hey, can I borrow your GoPro camera? I'm going to mount it on my head, and I'm going to take it out, um, and I'm going to go to my farm. I'm, I'm getting beehives. I'm like, what? What do you mean beehives? I'm like, yeah, I'm renting like 20 beehives so they can pollinate my 10-acre farm. I'm like, oh, you can rent bees? He's like, yeah. So I, I hand him the camera. You can rent bees? Yes, absolutely. Huh. <laughs> There's a whole business side of it where they, they'll they they'll truck 200,000 beehives to California so they can pollinate the almond trees. Right. It's huge. Yeah. So they're basically renting those bees. Wow. They don't need them all year round. So I'm like, fantastic. I, I, lent him, I lent him the thing and then I see the footage. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Fast forward, being a Kickstarter backer, I ran into this Kickstarter campaign called Flow Hive. They had a really nice video. This father and son researched and created this product after 10 years of researching. And it's really simple. You just turn the faucet and honey flows. You can just stick your bottle. I'm like, okay, this is That's, really easy. It's really cool, actually. It's really cool, too. Around this time... I'm still, I'm living, uh, I moved to Virginia from Colorado. And in Virginia, we were in a townhome. We didn't have that much space. I'm like, okay, everything's stacking in the back of my head, right? It's all just there. 2017, 
we move into a new place, we have huge backyard. I'm like, okay, now I can do beekeeping. I start watching videos and reading Gary Vee's book. <laughs> personal invitation. And, personal invitation. And um, <laughs> in the video, the guy's like, well, if you want to really become a beekeeper, you need to go join a local beekeepers group. I'm like, oh, local beekeepers group. Of course that makes sense. There's beekeepers around me, I'm sure. So I go to one of them and they're like, okay, we're, we have a class coming up in a couple of weeks. It's the weekend and you know, you can sign up here, blah, 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 and become a beekeeper. But then they also told me, hey, there's another local beekeeper's group that like 10 minutes from where you live. Cause I had driven like 50 minutes to go there to this one. Right. And they're like, hey, um, we have an eight week course. It's better for you to do the eight week course because the information will, you know, you're, you're going to retain it much better than taking a two eight hour day courses, you know, two, eight hours or two, four hours or whatever. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm down. So as I'm going through this process, I'm also reading the book. Right. And around the same time, a friend of mine reached out and was like, Hey dude, I want to do a podcast. And I remember you doing one in 2012. Can you help me? So I was like, all right, no problems, no no problems, sir. I, was, I started researching, ran into this app called Anchor.fm. Sure, I, I know Anchor. I was like, mind blown. Of course, we've been recording videos on our phones. Why not a podcast? You know, just mm -hmm. record audio. So all of that is like at the precipice. I'm like talking about this. I'm going to start this podcast. And my friend's like, you should talk about Queen B. You know who Queen B is, right? Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce. I'm like, I had no idea. So, so that day I had finished the book. He goes, document the journey. I got my first episode. I have the app on my phone. I get in the car and start recording. And that's how I started a podcast. So you decided that this personal invitation from Gary V to document your journey, that it would be fun to document a personal hobby journey. Yes. And you started doing it on your phone. In my car. In your car. Do you still record your podcast on the phone in your car? Not anymore. But I miss those days. I mean, we're not commuting anymore. We're, well, you know, that's working from true. Home. We're mm -hmm. not. You're right. Because was, It was two hours a day. I'd be commuting back and forth to work. And... Every day on my way to work, I would be recording an episode. On my way back, I would record another episode. And wow. Yeah. I mean, that's the perfect. It's funny. So, this episode is going to air in several weeks, not this week that we're recording, but this week that we're recording my Brave in Action live show, which is the weekly live show that I do. The topic is nothing works unless you do. And I feel like the story you just told, and yes, it was long, but it was lovely and it was very mm -hmm. detailed. And I can tell that you feel a lot of passion for the way this all started um, yeah. to, to start a podcast on your phone twice a day in your car is this perfect example of like, just do the fucking thing. Do the thing. Yes, I, I had please. somebody ask me, at a, I was at a, a, <sighs> women's entrepreneur workshop last week in Arizona. And I had lots of people asking me about podcasts. What do I need? And how can I get started? Mm -hmm. And blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know, you can make it as fancy and difficult as you want to. There are lots of ways to do that, but it's not required. And I just love that you were like, you can do it on your phone. And then when you grow or when you want to grow, if you ever want to, you can shift it, you can change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Just find a way to get the damn thing done. So can we, can we dig in on hobbies? Like, why do you think that you have always had so many different hobbies? And um, to tack onto that, <laughs> the doctor suggests honey. So honey becomes a beekeeping hobby. Is there, what, what is it inside of you that turns interests like they have to become hobbies? Cause I think that that's what I'm hearing from you. Your wife probably loves that. <laughs> like why another one um 
it's it's just how my brain works, right? I said curiosity in the beginning as one of the words. And I'm just born curious. Like mm. I would take apart the toy that my parents just bought me or, you know, I got it as a gift, like just to see the insides of it. I would I would say my favorite part of Iron Man movie was when he was tinkering with the suit. Not when he was flying around and showing off. No, no, no. It's the part when he's tinkering around with the suit, mm -hmm. figuring out how these gears connect and work in the electronics. So I always like to see the inner workings of things and digging into hobbies gave me that exact opportunity to be curious, to understand what it takes to go from point A to point B. Are you a hobby hopper or do you just add on more hobbies? Like, do you ever get like, okay, now I have taken this hobby as far as I can go and I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to add something else. Or do you just keep adding to your plate? It's impossible to keep adding to my yeah, plate. I would think but... so too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But being a parent of three kids yeah. and it's, it's important to stay curious and go as far as you can until you've extracted everything from that hobby. Okay, I can now apply this logic into other spaces. Now, I'm a user experience designer by profession, and I've been doing that for 20 plus years, right? Mm -hmm. So being a technologist, software guy, and you know, I got to know how things work so I can design better experiences. And the more hobbies mm -hmm. I, I encounter, the better I understand uh, the perspective of the other person. So then I can better design that solution. I like that idea a lot. Knowing how things works help you, helps you design better solutions. Yes. Mm, I like that a lot. That's really, really cool. So now... I mean, you do a lot of things. Tell folks all the different things you do, but you have the Hobbies and Hacks podcast. What kind of folks do you interview there? And and have any of your hobbies become your main gig, which is kind of what the show is about? Mm -hmm. So Hacks and Hobbies uh, started, uh, I came up with the name like three days after like <laughs> third or fourth episode. And I was like, oh, it's going to be called this. Um, I've interviewed any hobbyists, people that I met through Kickstarter, people that I met through work, people that I met through uh, other podcasts and me discovering other podcasts and people that I ran ran through and mostly people that I wanted to learn from. They're doing so great. How did they even get there, right? Yeah. That how analogy, I'm, I'm going in deeper into how they're making it work figuring out the inner workings of their journey to then mimic, you know, or figure out what my journey is supposed to be. So I've interviewed all walks of life just to figure out that inner working piece. Did you say that how analogy? Is that the term you used? I think so. I, I like that. I really like that. That speaks to what you were saying before, which is you want to understand how things work. You like taking them mm -hmm. apart. You can't take action on them or come up with solutions if you don't really understand all the mechanics. Yeah. And that really is, that's, I think maybe you should trademark that. The how analogy. That is, how analogy. that's your book, I think, Janaid. That's your. Oh, thank you so much. Because I've been thinking about <laughs> what would be my book about, you know, because in 2018, my friend was like, hey, I'm writing for this book as a chapter. This was called Magnetic Entrepreneurs. I was like, you should write a chapter. I was like, what would I write about? Like, I have no idea. And then I met him in person. He he was in, you know, the book with like 24 other people. I'm like, okay, fine. I will, I'll figure something out. So again, I was, <laughs> took me two days to record <laughs> two and a half hours of audio, which gave me 17,000 words. And the guy was like, hey, we only need 3,000 words. <laughs> <laughs> now you edit. <laughs> now you edit. So then I had mm -hmm. a help, help, I had help from like two, three different editors to, condense it down and, you know, take out the parts that were just too long. And I like the how analogy because every single episode 
on my podcast is how to yeah. blah, 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 how yeah. to blah, blah, blah. And I love that you said that, but you didn't even know you said it. I mean, again, mm-hmm. the signs, right? Like they come for us. Are we paying attention? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to title the episode that. So I think yes. that's, uh, yeah, it's really beautiful. I love that. Your show is celebrating its fourth birthday, just like this show just celebrated its fourth birthday. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Now you've really built this into quite a little podcasting empire, which is hard to do. I mean, there are a lot of podcasts out there. What has that journey been? I mean, maybe your different little hobbies haven't become Mm -hmm. your main gig, but certainly podcasting has become a huge part of your life. I would like to think so. (laughs) uh, As you go to speak at PodFest. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) My brother-in-law's brother-in-law called me podcast wala <laughs> meaning somebody who has a podcast it's a it's a urdu terminology like in in pakistan if you're from a certain expertise you're called that wala like chai okay. wala yeah, you yeah. probably heard of the chai wala with like handsome looking pucks on each eye wala and that was like going around memes so they called you podcast wala. but the podcast became an empire when i said i don't even know if it's in my empire but Initially, I was editing my own podcast. I was editing all, Ooh, my own episodes. A lot of work. And it is a lot of work. But I was like, I know how to do this. Sure. I mean, I'm a software developer. I'm a software user. I download like three new apps every day. So I can do this. Just and because you can do it all doesn't mean you should do it all, Jenny. I know. <laughs> but what I had to figure that out on the, the hard way. Mm -hmm. So as I'm focusing on my own podcast, editing my episodes, three hours at an episode at a time, but 40 in the backlog, I got myself fired from my job. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I think we secretly want to be fired. I know, but I didn't know that I wanted. I might have been there once in my life. (laughs) (laughs) So that happened. I'm like, okay, I, I... really should pay attention and hire somebody to edit the podcast. Yeah. And then I did. And I've been with the same person for the past couple of years. And I've helped her become somebody that she was not, right? She was a social media manager and she really wanted to learn. So I'm like, okay, I'll teach you. And so now we have, you know, I I was able to not only, she was only able to help me, but I also helped her in yeah. becoming something, you know, because it, it's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. You're ta- right. You give and take. Yeah. And it's really important to, to know that and be consciously aware of it. I think so many people move through life, uh, may, maybe less frequently entrepreneurs because we so need our team. <laughs> we so mm-hmm. need these people. And we know that we're helping them as well. But in life, this idea that you're not on an island. No, no way. And we leave, I have a whole blog post out I wrote years ago, and there's a section in my book as well called Intentional Legacy. Like we're leaving an impact yeah. no matter what. So don't you kind of want to be thoughtful about what it is that you're leaving behind from every interaction and every conversation? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Do you still keep bees? I do. I have three hives in my backyard and I was talking to my friend beekeeper yesterday as I returned his honey extractor. And I was like, it's so hard. It's a lot of work. He's like, yes, I know. You got to check on check on them every week. So I still have some, some bees, some hives. We'll see how long I take, I, you know, it keeps going. I might have to move into a bigger hive yard. <laughs> so then I can, Your wife might be like, listen. So then I can hire somebody. <laughs> <laughs> to manage them. I, we'll see. I'm all about outsourcing. I mean, I think it's a pretty brilliant approach. Get curious about something, make it a hobby, get really good at it, understand how it works, and then figure out how to make money off of it and hire mm-hmm. other people to do it so that you still have access to that hobby or passion, but it doesn't yes. have to take up all of your time. Yes. I like how you said that. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll share the episode with everyone. Of course. I am curious because you seem like such a, well, first of all, based on what you're telling me, you're a busy guy. You've got kids, you work from home, you have all of these hobbies, you have this work, you've 
your podcast. Um, but you seem so chill. Like you seem so balanced. Is there, do you have any tricks? Like how do you stay non frazzled with all of these moving parts? Well, make sure you take time for yourself. Like, for yeah, example, but that last... sounds like such a party line. I know, right? But this is... <laughs> let me let me just get into it, okay? Okay. You take time for yourself, but with another hobby, like for example, <laughs> <laughs> I like building Lego. Yeah. Lego bricks. So past weekend, we spent we spent uh, we spent some time. Like I spent some time looking through the bins for pieces so I can build this uh, bike that I bought in 2017. And then this weekend, we actually built a Lego sorter box. So you drop your pieces in the middle and it's got eight outputs. <laughs> and then you basically drop the similar bricks and we've got another additional, you know, small boxes at the end of each, each shoot. So you have eight <laughs> shoots. <pretty> great. <laughs> And this was an activity you were doing with your kid. Yes. So that's yes. lovely too. Yeah. Yeah. So I get into it and, and they're like, dad, what are you doing with this Costco box? We, you know, we got back from Costco. I'm just cutting whole doors on the end. Like, what are you going to do with this? And they're like, not interested. Right. I'm like, just watch, just watch. So then finally I was done with all the, all the doors. I'm like, I, and then I picked up another Amazon box, tore up the lid, flap lid, and cut it in shape so then I can make a little channel that would go from each door. And then once I made that first channel, I'm like, oh, I see what you're doing. And then they got down and they, you know, they, they cut it. They And then they, they basically finished building that sorter. And they're like, oh, we could put it over here. You know, so Another really example got of your outsourcing. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that as a little kid? Is that like just natural to you? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I am the oldest of seven siblings, so and probably. I don't remember <laughs> if <laughs> I did any outsourcing <laughs> like that. Come on, little siblings, you do all the work. <laughs> I will tell you how to do it. <laughs> but what, what's funny is that I love to do that myself, right? So yeah. if they weren't doing it, I was like, let's let's just continue doing it because I want to, you know, I want to instill in them that anything is possible if you really put your mind to it. Yeah. Like, Dad, I can't find this piece. Oh, Dad, I can't find this piece. I can't make this old Lego, you know, uh, Batmobile because I can't find all the parts. Can I build a new one? Because <laughs> all the parts are bagged correctly. That's interesting. Yeah. Take them and reinvent. I mean, Legos are this really fascinating uh I, I always get a kick out of parents who say, oh, my kids aren't really into anything except Legos. And they sort of poo-poo it like that's not engineering oh my God. <laughs> or you know i mean it's a really hard work I, my yeah. head explodes when the legos come out so i love that just to correct you i'm sorry don't ever call them legos because they're lego bricks legos actually the registered oh. mark <laughs> okay. um i think uh what's his name uh no one of the late night show hosts got called out on Twitter by Lego. It's not Legos. It is Lego bricks. Wow. Yeah. Who, who knew? Thank who you knew? for letting me know. <laughs> I don't want to get yelled at by the Lego brick company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't want to be. <laughs> That's really funny. So do you believe that hobbies and passions are the same thing? Man, I haven't gone down that path to figure out if they are the same thing or not. They could be sometimes. Other times they might not be. Right. And that doesn't make them less worthy of being pursued. Exactly. Yeah. Would you say that in your opinion, you have to just try things? That, I mean, that's the hobby. Like try the things, go out and see what clicks and what works and maybe some will turn into passions, perhaps like yeah. podcasting for you. Um, and and some you might you just like learn a little thing and know something else and yeah. and move on. No, absolutely. Um, you really have to have the the desire to go down that path. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Take the lat the path less traveled. I'm like, 
Who wants to do that sometimes? <laughs> Depends <laughs> on the topic, really... I suppose. Right, but if you really have the desire, no, no, I'm going to try something new because everything else that I've tried is not working. So yeah. maybe that's the situation. Maybe they, yeah. maybe they've tried everything and now they want to try something new. And maybe that's that's just how people learn sometimes. Yeah. I, I'm a learner. I'm a fan mm -hmm. of learning. And I really like this whole like throw yourself, throw yourself in, try something new and see yeah. what feels good, um, you know, with parameters. Like I'm not going to do that with hiking or right. exercising. That's not going to yeah. be me. But, you know, I might take a pottery class. I don't know. I, I don't. Th yeah. There has to be a strong enough why. Yeah. Why am I even doing this? I love that. I am really excited to ask you this question. So if you've okay. listened to the show, and I know you told me that you have, I ask every guest how they like to celebrate. And to me, the way you embrace life and learning and the how and hobbies, you must find so many opportunities to have things worth celebrating. So how mm -hmm. do you celebrate them? Wow. I celebrate it with the family. I'll celebrate with friends, uh, with the different mastermind groups and, and that I'm part of. Because it all comes down to you got to celebrate the type of thing that like-minded people would appreciate. Mm. Okay. Because well, if, I, if I talk about my podcasting with my family or my, they're like, oh, that's cool. But if I talk with other podcasters, like, oh, happy birthday. That's so awesome. It takes a lot of effort to get there. That's interesting. So different celebration in different ways with different people, mostly because I think you want that, like, I get it. That genuine, yeah. Genuine excitement. Do you ever do any celebration just yourself? If you take a look at my background. I see that. You guys um, those are Lego hear the background, but Lego bricks back there. Lego brick <laughs> constructions, figures, Star Wars. I love those. I, I have three unopened boxes that I need to build. <laughs> that's what that's one way that I celebrate because that. not only does it help me work the how to part of my brain, the how, the how analogy in my brain. Yeah. But then it also shows my personality. It becomes a piece that I can talk about. It becomes a storytelling aspect. Mm, I like that a lot. That's really lovely. No. Cool. Janaid, what is your favorite charitable organization to support? Okay. This is a very easy one. Mm -hmm. um, since I've been in the U.S., um, I've been supporting and I've even volunteered with this company called Islamic Relief. They do relief efforts all over the world for many, many years. And they've set up camps for refugees. They, they provide food. They do a lot of amazing things for people who are dislocated or mm. displaced individuals. So they they had they they've they've continued to expand and and they're probably one of the most efficient organizations as well. That's cool. Islamic Relief. Islamic USA. Relief. So they they will be our charity of the week, and we will give them some social love and listeners take an opportunity to get to know them and support in whatever way that you can. Uh, I really feel passionate about coming together as a global community. That's why I ask that question every week and finding new ways to connect and support one another across the globe. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. All right, Janaid, will you share your three words with us one last time? Curiosity. Action. And transformation. <laughs> Okay. So I love those three words and I'm cracking up at the joy and the way that you presented them, but those were not your original three words, right? No, they were not. Can you tell us what your original, original three words were? original three words were kind of uh, corny, but it started with hobbies because of like hacks and hobbies. There has to be something. Hobbies, podcast, because those hobbies enable me to create a podcast, which then enabled me to create a studio. So hobbies, podcast, and studio were the three original words. But then the more I looked at it and then I saw the email of me telling you the story, I'm like, wait, 
hobbies enable me to be curious. So it enabled, you know, it embodied curiosity in me. Then I took action by starting a podcast. And as I podcasted, I needed a place to record those episodes. And <laughs> the pandemic created an opportunity for me to create a space so I can do video. And that was my studio. And that was the transformation. I love it. I really love that journey. And I love the reframe. And to me, that is just, it continues to to bring home who you are and how you approach life and hobbies and podcasting and parenting and, and all of that. It's so much fun. How can folks connect with you, find you, follow you, listen to you, all that good stuff? So they can uh, just ask Siri to, <laughs> to play <laughs> Hacks and Hobbies podcast. Mm -hmm. Or if they don't, if, you know, any virtual assistant, Google or Alexa, and they'll be able to play Hacks and Hobbies. But if you want to find out more, you can go to hacksandhobbies.com. If you want to learn a little bit more about my studio, because you keep hearing studio and like, well, I have a home studio and I help people set up their home studios for podcasting course creation. That's over at homestudiomastery.com. That's awesome. Are you on any of the socials, Instagram, Twitter? TikTok? Yes, I am on socials at Supergenate or at Hacks and Hobbies. Okay. I love it. We'll put links in the show notes, folks, so you can find Janaid in all the places. And, you know, the podcast is fascinating and hearing what all of these different types of hobbies are and and how people are embracing them. This has really been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm still giggling at the personal invitation from Gary V. <laughs> I can't wait to find a way to weave that story in. And while I feel slightly had, I think it was so brilliant. And um, I love the way it played out. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Absolutely. This was a pleasure. And it helped me solidify a story that I can tell in the future. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Folks, thank you so much for being here and for listening. Go check out the ha hop Hobbies and Hacks, Hacks and podcast. Hobbies. Hacks and Hobbies. Oh, did I say it wrong before? I might have. Hacks and Hobbies. I don't Hacks know. Hacks and Hobbies. There's Hobbies. There's Hacks. There's all of it. Go listen. <laughs> share this episode. If you like it, if it connected with you, do me a favor. Share it with, you know, two or three people that you think might appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe or follow the show anywhere you enjoy streaming your podcasts. And my favorite request is if you like it, write a review, not because it helps with the algorithm, although it kind of does, but mostly because it just lets me know you're out there and you're enjoying it. And it makes me feel good folks. And we can celebrate that. Thank you for being here. We'll be back very soon with a brand new episode of the Brave Files podcast. I'm your host, Heather Vickery, reminding you today and every single day to go out and choose bravely. Bye now. You've been listening to The Brave Files, stories of people living courageously. Visit us at thebravefilespodcast.com to learn more about the show, find our show notes, and access full episode transcripts. And we'd love to know what you think of the show. We invite you to connect with us via Instagram and send a DM. You'll find us at The Brave Files Podcast on Instagram. Our music was created and produced in a custom collaboration with Matt Lewis from ML Creative Consulting, a boutique firm dedicated to helping clients identify their unique sound and amplify their brand with custom delivered soundtracks. Special thanks to everyone on Team Brave from our audio engineer to our producers, associate producers, copy editors, writers, and support team. The show wouldn't exist without them and we are eternally grateful. I'm your host and executive producer, Heather Vickery. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>